writers of the heart. And have been for many years now, ever since we came back to Grass Valley. I'm a native. I was born and raised here many years ago. So. About, I think we've been working together for over 14 years, facilitating couples, individuals, and groups. And do you have worked professionally in the field for how long? About 34 years. Your specialty is? Relationship, communication, and sexuality. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to introduce ourselves and how we'd like to do that as I introduce him and I say a little bit about him. This is my husband, the love of my life, who I met at age 54 after having finally done enough work to qualify <laughs> to understand what was keeping me from real intimacy and relationship when I brought. Uh, and believe me, I got blisters and calluses on my feet from walking around that walk. But this is about him. This is my greatest teacher. If I want to know what my work is and what issues are up for me, he provides a loving and relentless mirror. And we have chosen to do relationship that way. So we are each other's greatest teachers. Um, it's a joy living and working with Orb. It's my greatest dream to be able to contribute to people with him at my side. He has been my teacher in all of this. Um, I had great on the job training. Uh, I don't know a man who understands women the way this man does and feels into women. A lot of calluses on my <laughs> <laughs> um, He's a passionate man with big energy, and he's a passionate water skier and boater. I am his driver. And um, that's another form of sex for us, is our water ski routine. And one of the questions we're going to ask you later is, what do you think sex is, really? So, um, did I miss anything that you would that's, like to that's say? That's fine. I mean, okay. <laughs> you could go on for I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to introduce my beloved, my wife, Maeve, who also I met at Likewise, I had tons and tons of, we call it relationship practice. <laughs> we had no silver spoons. We worked it out step by step, day by day. Uh, we'd done enough work on ourselves. Fortunately, by the time we found each other, you know, we, were, we had an idea of who we were and what we wanted. So. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't yeah. still have stuff, by the way. <laughs> still teaches a little bit, and to this day, when she sings, it still brings tears to my eyes. Thank you. So, this is us. And I'm, I wanted to do logistics first, just because we're going to end with something that is going to be so sweet that nobody's going to want to talk after that. So let me get the, the nitty gritty out of the way. And all the advertising. All the advertising. <laughs> Over on that table are two pamphlets, one for men, one for women, and they are both called 15 Hot Tips to Keep the Fires Burning. For the men, a guide to getting everything you want from your women as you become her greatest hero and greatest lover. And for the women, a guide to getting everything you want from your man. When your man is winning with you, he is your hero and knight in shining armor. We call this sort of cake pot re recipe books. <laughs> it's not therapy, but it's tips that we've learned that work in the man-woman game in general. Knowing that there are always exceptions, we found these really helpful. They're $5 each. So if you want to pick one up, there's a basket on that table, a little wicker basket. Um, you can just throw five bucks in. And uh, we recommend them. 
And then, Doris book, it used to be called Intimacy, A Green Light to Red Hot Sex, which is the name of our presentation. Someone said sex sells, so. <laughs> yeah. But we have to change the title to yeah. Deeper Love, Hotter Sex because we have problems with the publisher. But this is really a book about intimacy. It's not a position book, or it doesn't even really talk much about sex, but mm, how but to does. get to the good stuff. Much, I said. Yeah. So this is how much today? $16, special show price. And you will get an autograph and a dedication from the author, should you choose to pick one up. They're wonderful. And everything that we talk about in the presentation, you will probably find in the book. One of the things I love about the book is you don't have to read it cover to cover. The chapters are small. And at the end of each chapter are some exercises and processes, some writing. So you actually get to practice what you read, and that creates connection right there. Um, anyway. Yeah. Is what's covered in those two books in the big book? No. No. Okay. Well, no. Oh, some of somewhat. In okay. some ways. And, and but short in different words. Like Reader's Digest, more version? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but not all of that. It's not all of that. Um, there's a sign-in sheet if you want to be on our mailing list, email list. Please put your name and email or whatever you're comfortable putting there. There's some pamphlets that talk about what we do. There's some flyers about our upcoming next series, the third one that we've given. This one is called The Three C's of Great Sex. And at the end of the class today, if you're dying to know what the three C's are, you can kind of imagine in your mind. We might tell you. <laughs> it's going to be very informative, safe, and get all your questions answered that maybe you've always been afraid to ask. Can I invite you to come up closer? Or you may be very comfortable at the back, but we love people being close. I think I've said every Oh, my friend, Kalinda B., who um, is a dear friend we've reconnected with, has become an author. And she's writing some very spicy romance novels that have some very intimate uh, revelations in them. And uh, just take a look at her, her posters and there's some bookmarks uh, for her books. They're called A Wicked Awakening, A Wicked Beginning. She, she's very good. She's a lovely lady. And she's she kind of sexy a writer. Sexy writer. <laughs> OK, so well, I think what we'd like to do is name. Yeah. Let's just quickly go through and, and uh, get a name from you and, and maybe a feeling word of what's going on with you right now on the feeling level. So let's see, your name and one feeling word, just to presence you here in the class. Would you mind starting? Uh, my name's Jamie. Excited.
like you to do is just take a moment, close your eyes, take a breath. And just let come into your awareness. Remember what called you to this day and this presentation. What is your intention and your desire around these, uh, these subjects? What do you want? And now slowly open your eyes and come back into the room. We want to go, by the way, we totally invite questions, comments, anything. That really rounds it out. We, have, we can easily talk for a couple of hours out here, but it's so much more fun to have the interaction. So please share with us thoughts, experiences, and we'll start with that. Like, uh, well, what is sex? Any ideas? Just throw out a word or two, popcorn or anything. Well, to me, sex is life. Let's go to one of the other key words. What is intimacy? Connection. I'm sorry. Connection. Connection. Why don't I just say it into the group when I hear it so that everyone can hear it? Authenticity. Authenticity. Feeling safe. Feeling safe. Trust. Trust. Wholeness. Wholeness. Into me I see. Into me I see. Yes. Have you done the high workshops? No. <laughs> <laughs> we say into me you see. But yes, the first place we have to see is. Anyone else? What is intimacy? Doorway to the divine. Doorway to the divine. <laughs> we have people, uh, clients we see, and, and uh, they'll say, Wow, we were intimate last night. And I'll say, really? And did you have good sex? <laughs> so a lot of people interchanged, meaning I was intimate, meaning I had sex. Well, I think we can have intimate sex and non-intimate sex. Uh, so intimacy is, I believe, purely an emotional experience of connection. Again, all the words that you use out there. Yeah. But our favorite definition is into me. The also, real me hanging out with the real you. I also like into me I see because if I can't see into me, <laughs> then I'm not available to um, let myself be seen or see into you. How many people here have had any non-intimate sex in their lives? <laughs> Yay. How many people have had intimate sex? Yay. <laughs> you know, there's all flavors. In it, this world. It's what a about buffet. Non-sexual intimacy. Pardon me? What about non-sexual intimacy? How about intimacy without sex? <laughs> intimacy without sex, just an emotional connection. Yeah. So, let's go to this handy little, looks like a target over here. And this is my own original work. You won't find it anywhere, but if you work or by the book, and I call it the relationship ripple. 
So my vision was, years ago when I created this, was, well, first my question was, what are some components of a great relationship? And with that question, I started to bring it in, channel it, if you will. And I got it was like throwing a rock in a still pond, kerplunk, and it ripples out. So what was at the heart of, of relationship, be it with yourself or anyone else? And I believe it's the truth. You know, if we're not telling ourselves the truth, what's true for us, and our partner isn't, um, we're kind of dead in the water. So I call it the greatest gift of love we can give someone we care about. The very greatest gift of love. And it's not always easy. What gets in the way of telling the truth? outsides and his insides meet and they match. So I can relax in that. And it's an art form, truly. I had a partner that would just slam me and I was a quivering bowl of jelly on the floor. And, you know, I just told you my truth. <laughs> Take your truth and the horse you rode in. <laughs> we teach that in our communication workshops, but it always begin with I and Trust what our partner is saying. Trust there is no 
underground thoughts or behaviors that aren't being communicated. And trust is a function of time. You know, we need to see repeated behaviors over and over to kind of let our guards down and know that emotional safety net is under us. Uh, when trust is broken, you know, it takes time to rebuild it. So it is a function of time. And people want, how long is it going to? As long as it takes, I hope. <laughs> you'll, you'll be trusting in a week or a year as long as it takes <coughs> to feel safe. I'm so uh, glad you said that word. I it hit me too. What did I say? Safe. safe. <laughs> what do women really need to open sexually? Safety. Can we feel safe if we don't trust? For us to open up and take another body into ours, we need to be able to open in a, in a way that I wish men could understand. I really do. Uh, it's... Um, How about more men? More men, because you can. <laughs> uh, so it's a very vulnerable uh, place, and that safety is key for us to open, and to open to um, the highest orgasmic place that we can go to, and just let go and fly free into the universe, knowing that we're, we're held, and um, that there's presence and safety. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you, Chris. So I believe coming out of the womb in love and light, there's just two things we really want, need, and desire from the beginning through our lives, and that is to feel love and to be safe. You know, and we'll do whatever is necessary, especially as a kid, to get that. And uh, we take on a lot of adaptive behaviors uh, to feel safe. So now we feel safe and we trust, we can move into intimacy. Uh -huh. Into me you see. The real me hanging out with the real you. So, if truth and trust, I don't have to uh, protect my soft underbelly. I can be open. Here I am, world. Here I am, me. And, uh, you know, that uh, is just a wonderful uh, springboard for sex. When we call these the foundation steps, truth, trust, and intimacy opens the doors wide to be vulnerable, to communicate, uh, to try new things, either emotionally, sexually. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to talk a minute about um, what intimacy can provide in sexual connection. It can open the door for no agendas. So that if I don't come or he doesn't come, it's not the end of the world. It's did we connect? It can provide for an opportunity for me to say, honey, I, I need your eyes right now. I just lost my feeling of connection. Can we just connect with our eyes? Uh, it can provide room for giggling and being silly. Notice they call it sex play and not, not sex, sex work. work. <laughs> or bursting, <laughs> bursting into tears if that's what's up. One of our favorite dates that we'll never forget is candles lit, it was snowing, beautiful music, and I cried the whole time, because I felt, who said, overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. And he just held me and told me I was magnificent. That's the date I remember. So intimacy can provide for all of these colors um, on the palette of human interaction. And we're sure great if you have great orgasms, that's wonderful. We're not putting down <laughs> orgasms. We have, we have a, is anyone here? Um, <laughs> <Man. laughs> we love them too. Is there anyone here offended by four letter words? Did I hear yes? No? Um, oh. Yes. Okay. okay, so I will say it this way. We have a little saying. We will live to F dot 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 again. 
This won't be the last this time we'll be, be sexual. Time. So we make each other more important. <coughs> and we've got to carry through and do this. And uh, that's, a, that's a nice yeah. aphrodisiac yeah. and something to look forward to. And when does sex start? each other so that if it's comfortable you can hold hands. And that's optional and only if it's okay with each person. other with your eyes, no words, just a thank you with your eyes. Thank you 
you're done, switch.
like the simplicity of the exercise and the opportunity to slow down and go back to the basics. Yeah. Reflective. Mm -hmm. It was a reflective experience. It was a reflective experience. One more. I enjoyed the Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for going there with us. We have an exercise plan. You will recognize this. Uh, and it's going to take some logistical maneuvering. Uh, because what we're going to be doing is creating two circles in the room, one facing out and one facing in. In order for that to happen, the chairs are going to have to be moved. Yes? There's an open space in the middle. It's a two way for you to pop up. You can also invite right in the front end of yoga. So what a great room. idea. So we could, Go ahead, we, mate. we could move us. Or I'm just going to check it out. We'll, and our, I think our music is portable. So um, is that? A, um, I, I think it'll work probably faster than moving all the chairs. Yeah. So, all right, let me just tell you, let, before we go, let Or and me demonstrate how this is going to look. And before I do that, I want to remind you, everything on the table, the things for sale, the things to sign, uh, pamphlets to take, workshop announcements, don't forget that. Because when you are when you leave this exercise, you'll be in a, what we call a slightly altered state, we hope. <laughs> so you'll be facing your partner. So yeah. let, me, let me a little background. The idea of this is to give each of you in the room. Imagine that. <laughs> so, uh, as Meg mentioned, there's going to be an inside circle and an outside circle, and it's going to be fluid, so it doesn't matter who's on the inside and who's on the outside. Just we'll make sure that everyone has a face in front of them. And when you get to me, I'm going to dance you around in a way that you don't expect, and just surrender and let me do that. <laughs> so here's how it's going to look when you find your partner, one person. Uh, the name of it is Hands on Heart. We change it slightly from the way they do it at high. We're going to use a tantric hand position where I'm going to put my right hand on the center of Horace's chest, which in tantra is where the heart resides. So it's the right hand. The right hand on your partner's heart. Your left hand covers the right hand. Clear? Okay. The heart isn't over here or over here. Or down or here. Or down here. It's there. <laughs> in the center. You're going to take a moment and gaze into your partner's eyes as we just did, breathing together. Orb is going to say something like, I would love to do this dance with you. And then he's going to say, Namaste. And this is the motion. And Namaste means that the divine in me salutes and sees the divine in you. So we do a little Namaste and take a step to the left. you're in front of me, and I'm going to do something strange with you, like dance you in this direction, in that direction, all right? So if you would go into that room, find a partner, and then just have one person facing outside and one person facing inside. I'm going to take the 